Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another weekly edition of Into the Void! This is a game between Tyler and the old dude on Frost, the latter edition. In the bottom left side of the map, we have the Red Terran player. It is Tyler! And in the top right side of the map, we have the Blue Protoss player. It is the old dude from the old clan. Yes, this is the same old dude who is responsible for the song at the end of this cast. Which has been around for several months now. There's a link in the description to his website. And uh, yes, he does really amazing stuff with StarCraft music. He is planning on doing a Protoss version. A Protoss or a Terran? Let's see. Ah yes, he's working on the Terran song. We have tried a Protoss song already, but for some reason that kept getting picked up by the copyright filters on YouTube. It said it was matching this weird song that I'd never even heard of before. It has no similarity to, similarity to it whatsoever, but it kept making it so I couldn't post <laughs> that uh, my cast with that on the end. So he's working on a Terran song now. So if you have any inspiration for him, uh, let us know in the comments. Like maybe some lyrics you could use or some musical styles that would match the Terran. Uh, let us know. I'm sure that uh, the old dude will be around in the comments to read those. And let us know what's going on. So, here we are. Barracks just about finishing for the Terran player, Tyler. We'll see if he goes for the Reaper here. Reapers can be a little bit scary at the lower levels. Just because it takes quite a bit of micro to make them work correctly and not just get murdered. And yes, if this is your first time here and Into the Void, welcome. The purpose of this weekly cast on Friday nights is to investigate Silver and Bronze level StarCraft II play. I know that um, it's been done in the past, right? But I'm not sure anybody's doing it consistently right now. So I figured everybody should have a voice. Everybody should be seen uh, being cast in StarCraft 2. Probe kill. Old dude gets a probe kill with one of his probes nicely done. Gets an SCV kill, rather. But I guess you could see it both ways. Probe kill could mean the probe kills something. And probe kill could mean the probe got murdered. One of the two. Either way, the old dude has two gateways here. He's got a cybernetic score ready to rock. Marine production here for Tyler. Second barracks on the way for Tyler. Okay, so so here we go. This is why this is why we do this. Uh, because for some reason, if we take a look at it here, um, Tyler is going for double gas, which is fine as long as you're going for something that's gas heavy. As long as you're going for something in the factory, something in the starport. But basically, if you're just going straight marines off of two barracks, there is no reason on earth you need two refineries fully saturated with three workers each. There's not. We're going to watch this uh, Vespine gas number grow quickly for pretty much forever until Tyler decides to go for a factory, which he is now. But this is going to get up to like five, six hundred. It's just it's not really worth it. If you're going for a two racks opening, expand. Use your marines for defense and then go for the factory. But at this one base play, it's just not making any sense whatsoever. Meanwhile, the old dude is working on these adept. They are out. One adept is out anyway. He's got three gates and a pylon. Interestingly enough, we'll see. We'll see how that's going to work out for him. On the Protoss side of things, I just recommend learning the one gate expand for Protoss. I guarantee there are guides on it out there on Team Liquid, other places. Does try to expand as Tyler, but no, the Adepts come in and whoop, pause that at the very least. Try to Sonic transfer his way on up into the main base. There are a bunch of Marines here, though. Are there enough Marines to kill them? Yep. That's why he cancels the Sonic transfer and backs out. Nicely done by the old dude. So there's the expansion as well, expanding while he attacks. Is always a good thing. It's hard to remember though, right? Because when you're attacking, you kind of want to go ahead and focus on just attacking. But if you can attack and keep your opponent on their back foot while you're getting an expansion back home, it's good. It really increases your chances of getting that expansion up successfully. Really decreases the chances that your opponent is going to be able to stop it from happening. If you're on defense and you're trying to expand, that's an entirely different story. Either way, the old dude is working on these two bases, getting a robotics facility as well. Worker count right now is 22 to 23. Both these players keep in pace with each other. On that harvester number, Tyler replacing the SCV, building this command center. He's going to be able to finish it as well. So what do we got? There's the starport. Factory has a tech lab. Starport's going to have a reactor. So double pumping medevacs at this point is a pretty good idea. Has the tech lab. Not using it to make marauders or get any of these upgrades. If you're going to get a tech lab, you have to get an upgrade of some kind. Usually, the uh, the order the pros do this is they get stim first, then they'll get combat shield, and maybe they'll get concussive shell if they're getting a lot of marauders. But haven't seen a whole lot of heavy marauder play in Terran lately, so maybe that's an upgrade you might be able to skip if you're trying to emulate the pros like Byun, like other amazing Terran players that are out there. So the old dude is getting stalkers. He's got adepts. 
throwing a pylon at the front for that photon overcharge ability that the mothership has right here. 50 energy out of the 200 that she can get maximum. Energizes the target pylon's Kadarian Crystal, turning it into a powerful long-range weapon for 14 seconds. That deals 30 damage. Isn't the Kadarian Amulet upgrade for Templar, for High Templar? Used to increase the amount of energy they got when they were made. Something like that. They started with when they were warped in. Been a while. Been a while since that's been the case, I think. Twilight Council on the way for the old dude and doing a pretty good job. I mean, he is definitely doing some fairly, fairly good stuff here for the Protoss side of things. Terran player, on the other hand, is moving out. He's got Marines. He's got tanks. He knows how to do this. You go Marine tank. The Marines are good for stuff up close. They're good for things like stalkers. Not as good for things like Adepts, but the tank is here for splash damage as well. So does he have any of those upgrades? Is he working on Stim? No, not working on Stim. He does have two engineering bays coming out, though. That's a good deal. I do enjoy a good two engineering bay opening from Terran. It tells me they're serious about upgrades, and they're serious uh, about making sure they have that plus three, plus three at a certain time. Because that, more than any other upgrade, a plus three, plus three on Marines increases their effectiveness so much. So, 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 so much. There it is, working on plus one, plus one. Gorgeous. Nice job there. Tyler getting Liberators, too, making some Medivacs. A Stargate on the way from the old dude. So he's got Robotics Facility, Stargate, and Twilight Council off of two base, which seems a little bit uh, a little bit ambitious, but you know what? It could work out for him, no problem. So here comes this Marine Medivac tank push, and I think it's going to do fairly well. The Immortal could be a problem for Tyler, but these Adepts shouldn't pose too much of an issue, and neither should the Stalker. Photon Overcharge, though, big deal. Here we go, trying to take down that cannon first. Photon Overcharge on that pylon. Keeping the... Nope, does Photon Overcharge that one as well. Does manage to almost take it down. The tank is in tank mode, but in the front... Oh, no, gets taken down immediately by the old dude. And Tyler recognizes a losing fight when he sees it. Picks up the remaining of his Marines and actually picks up and boosts into the main base of the old dude. Immediate warping of Adepts here to deal with that. And Tyler says, no, thank you. I'm not landing with four or five Marines against that many Adepts and Stalkers. It's time to go. So he goes out. So nicely held off there by the old dude. What is he working on back here? Stargate? He made the Stargate and actually hasn't done anything with it to this point. So I'm not sure what the plans are, but usually if you're going to make something like that, you have you have some sort of a plan in the back of your mind. Plus one, plus one, just about to finish here for the tile. The old dude is working on a plus one attack for his ground units, which covers all that you see here, except for the observers because they fly. And moving out with another drop is Tyler and a Liberator. So he's going to join up with his friends up here. The initial drops didn't actually leave. They're just kind of hiding behind this potential third base location for the old dude. And back home, Tyler's working on more and more barracks. He recognizes that he's floating money. He's got about 700, 800 minerals, 800, 900 gas. Says, I need more production facilities or I need to expand. Expanding is good, but also getting more production facilities is pretty much a given at the situation. So Liberators here, four medevacs, three medevacs. Two of them are mostly full. And this could be a pretty devastating drop here. The old dude does has left a few stalkers here to defend the main base he has supply block though working on some phoenix making two pylons to rectify that supply block and tyler let's do this thing man let's go not doing it waiting for his additional friends of medevacs to come on in can't necessarily blame him for that the old dude is sending four adepts out to see what damage they can do they have resonating glaives they have plus one attack very dangerous against small groups of scvs small groups of marines We'll see what they can do. This front door is wide open for Tyler. Absolutely wide open. And here he goes. It's going to set up that Liberator Defender Mode Circle. There it is. Basically beg the Stalkers to come on in and then set everybody down on the inside. Going to bait the Stalkers to come into that circle and die. Go for it, Tyler. Do your thing. And yeah. No, no, no. Move back. There we go. Moving back. The Stalkers, though, staying out of range of that circle. Looks for that one that died. And this one that's going to die. And that one that's going to die. Phoenix tries to deal with it. Marines take care of it. Here comes the rest of the army. Liberator doing some shots here. Taking out some things. But a lot of it is actually staying out of range. Man, Liberator on Immortal. Pretty good work. Stalker on the low ground. Just enough HP to take down that Liberator. And Tyler decides to back out. Ah, he had more Marines. Why didn't he bring those ones? That's the other thing. You really want to attack with everything that you got. I can definitely suggest you doing that one. A forward pile on here by the old dude, which isn't super forward. It's still pretty far away from the Terran base. So maybe this is going to be some hidden tech. 
or some such. It does seem like that is a very real, very real possibility. Working on plus two, plus two. Now is Tyler. Now that the excitement is over, he can return it to working on his upgrades and making more and more barracks. Just going for this bioplay. Going, wow, going for a lot of liberators and a lot of medevacs. So pro tip here, if these... Uh, these units that are stuck in queue here, they're taking your money, but they're not doing anything for you. So if you have enough money to support this, make another starport with a reactor and do that. Taking a third base is Tyler up in the top to the right of his natural and a fourth base. But the adepts are here. The old dudes, the adepts are here trying to take out the command center, getting the SCV, forcing a cancel there. Can they take it down before the army shows up to stop this from happening? I don't think so. Adepts, free kill. Oh, we got to cancel that. You have to cancel that, Tyler. You can't just let it die. That makes you lose all of your money. If you cancel, you get a partial refund to the money that you spent. The old dude is taking his third base down here. That's what he's doing. It's not a forward pylon at all. He's taking a sneaky, sneaky ninja expand. All right. Also getting sneaky, sneaky dark shrine and getting some tempest as well. I don't. Mm, we've had this discussion. I'm just not sure that tempest are a great choice against the liberators. But you know what? At this level, anything is possible. If you macro well enough, you're going to have a pretty good time against your opponent. SCV transferring to that third base gets taken down by the Adept Hit Squad. Trying to sneak into the natural here, too. And uh, there's really nothing to stop this from happening. Resonating Glaives and plus one. Damaging stuff, man. Damaging plus two now with plus one armor. Woo. The old dude making those upgrades happen. And this is just a massacre. Run, Tyler! Your game is telling you you're under attack. You have to run these SCVs away. The one saving grace they have is that they're faster than the Adepts. Liberator sets up. Some Marines come in and try to save it. Not going to happen again. The upgrade's too good on the Adept. There we go. Defender mode circles are there. The old dude needs to go. No. All right. Liberators clear those guys out immediately, but that's a lot of dead SCVs. 25 workers killed by the old dude. What? 25. It's now 38 to 15 total harvesters. The old dude is up and functional. He's got three bases. His army supply is pretty good as well. 76 to 74. But that worker supply, a big deal. Big, big discrepancy between the two. So like I said, more Tempest coming out from the old dude. Getting plus, one gr or plus two ground armor and plus one air weapons. Getting additional Vespian gas. Because if you're going the Sky Toss Tempest route, you need a lot of gas. No one's going to disagree with you if you say that. And Marines here for Tyler. Is that all that Tyler has? He's got four Liberators, 50 Marines, and nine Medivacs. Where are those Medivacs? He didn't actually try dropping up here. It doesn't look like he did. Oh, the DT attack at the third. Oh, the old dude. That so many dead SEVs. That's, that's a lot. 28 workers killed. Third base burned. Ooh, almost burned to the ground. It does manage to lift off before the DTs can finish it off. But it's burning. It is on fire. SCV. I don't... I just... You can scan. You have a scan on this orbital command. Do it. It's right here. Scan. There's the scanner sweep. Nicely done. DTs kind of... Oh. They got caught in no man's land. They were going to go there. Then they had to run back. And that just kept them inside the scan range. And in the range of these marines. And they all got destroyed. So in that situation, I would recommend committing. Just send the DTs in. Archon here against that many marines. Not a good look. Down to 38 hit points on those shields. And only 10 total hit points underneath that. As Archons have been since the beginning of time immemorial. Alright. So the old dude. Where are your Tempest? They're hanging out here. So the bulk of the army here for the old dude is here. He's got Adepts. He's got Stalkers. He has Immortals. And Tempest in the sky. Plus one attack just about to complete. DTs once again. They really want to finish off that command center. Can they get it? I think they can. Bam. They get the command center. The scan hasn't even worn off yet. But they did manage to survive somehow. Another round of DTs really making it work here for the old dude. It's two bases right now. For Tyler, it's 25 to 43 harvesters, but the army supply a little bit bigger for Tyler, 88 to 76. He needs to make something happen and make it happen now, or he's just going to take a slow, slow fall into a defeat. Sneaky, sneaky third base by the old dude is still being sneaky. Tyler's not flying over it. Taking a fourth base here, uh, just down into the left of his natural, as is tradition. And Templar Archives on the way from the old dude as well. So he just wants all the tech. He wants all the tech that Protoss has. And I can't necessarily blame him. There's a lot of good things you can do if you have all the tech of Protoss. Production tab looking great for the old dude. A lot of upgrades coming in. Expansions on the way. Cannons as well. And pretty much just Marines for Tyler. 
And you know what? I can't blame him. At this level, just Marines can be pretty good. Can be a pretty excellent situation in my experience. Liberators leading the way. He might try to attack into this natural base just as the old dude is leaving to protect his fourth. <gasps> Oh, this could be bad. This could be bad for the old dude. Liberator going to set up at this section. Tempest from distance, though. Getting shots off on those Liberators. Just unloading everything here in the natural base. Liberator walks into her doom for some reason. But a lot of Marines here. Phoenix dying immediately. DT is getting mixed in as well. Does he have a scan? Do you know there are DTs here? I don't know. The DT is doing a lot of work. Adepts as well. Stalkers. Phoenix are trying to clear him out, but I think the DTs are the MVPs of that match. Woo! Five kills on that one. Seven kills on that one. Yeah, DT is super, super cost efficient in that battle. That's the thing. Using DTs at the lower levels can be very good just because your opponent sometimes doesn't see them. Doesn't see them, doesn't hear the noise that they make when they're attacking in the midst of battle, and they can really rack up the kills while everybody else maybe wouldn't have done as well. And maybe aren't doing as well. So Tyler gets out of there. He killed some probes, 13 of them to be exact. It is now 24 to 35 harvesters. So he did take that discrepancy and bring it down just a little bit. But Liberators here for Tyler. Marines here for Tyler. That plus two, plus two has completed. He's working on plus three. He's making more Marines. He's making more medevacs. I would probably recommend making a Raven in this situation. If your opponent has been shown to have that many DTs, three of them up here, three of them came down here, like two or three back here, just bring a Raven. It'll totally be worth the money that you pay for it. You can throw down PDDs, which is also excellent. I mean, it's a great spellcasting flying unit that can have a lot of utility in these situations especially. And the permanent detection is fantastic really really useful so here he comes marines pushing out here for tyler does he still not he does have stim he finally got stim at some point doesn't have combat shield which it does just add 10 percent or 10 points to the marines hit point total which is a lot that's a lot of percent for marines liberator setting up shop at this fourth a lot of dead probes now run get out of there go i guess killing a stalker is fine but just got murdered Marines coming up along this right side. He's got more Liberators trying to set up shop at this natural. He's going to be able to take down all the probes that are here as well. Ah! Oh no. Here we go. More dead probes. Dead probe count. Getting up there too. Closer to that 30 range. And pushing for it here. Stimming forward with the Medivax. Goes for the third base. He was hoping that the old dude I think would respond. Uh, a little bit sooner there. Great storm on top of those Marines chasing everybody back. Again, DT leading the charge. Some medevacs coming in and getting murdered trying to do this. But again, the DT's on the front line just murdering everything. The storm, yeah, helping as well there. But that DT's got 11 kills. Dark Templar, super cost efficient. More Dark Templar. Quitting up what it was remaining. And the Liberator finally gets cleaned out. But it's 24 to 27 Harvesters. 27 and 30 workers killed. Both players have done a lot to hurt the other when it comes to harassment in this match. So Tyler is still sitting on these three bases. He's muling up his third fairly well. The old dude has his four, but again, when you have equal worker count, it doesn't really matter all that much. And here comes the old dude. Is he going to push? Is he going to push? No, he's playing defensively. All right, all right, here's the deal. If you just won a battle convincingly, like you lost hardly anything, and the resources lost, if you could see it, would be 13,000 to 8,000, where your opponent has lost more than you, go. Just go for it. I understand. I understand you're worried about leaving yourself open to another attack, but man, your army is ginormous right now. You have some DTs coming to scout things out, four of them. I mean, that one's a disciple with three kills. That one's an instructor with 12 kills. That one's a disciple with two. I mean, the DTs have just been wrecking. You still don't have a missile turret or anything here, Tyler? Come on, man. You have to have detection. See how these DTs, or this one DT is wrecking your face, killing mules, one-shotting SCVs. Does have that plus three attack, 60 damage per swipe. Bruh. Another one dead. That's good. At least he's running. At least he's pulling this time, is Tyler. Taking a fourth base up along this top left side as well. And, yep, still no Ravens, still no Missile Turrets, none. Zero Missile Turrets for Tyler. He's got Engineering Base, he can make them. Maybe he doesn't know about detection. Maybe he doesn't know that he has buildings that can detect things. And here comes the old dude, leading with the Stalkers, coming with Templar in the back as well. They've got Storm. 
They're working on getting that 200 total energy that is available. Archon's actually getting here before anybody else. With plus three attack against Bio. Oh, that's so darn good. 47 damage. No, not attack moving Tyler. Okay, then he attack moved. It was probably too late. Archon with seven kills, with eight kills. Backing on out. No, you got this thing. I mean, sure, the Tempests are good. A bit of a whiff on a storm there by the old dude. But his storms to this point have been great. Super good. Tempest doing lots of damage to that command center. They're trying to fly away. Another great storm on the Marines coming down the ramp. Losing Medivacs to the storm. Siege tank trying to do what they can as well. Archon here with 11 kills. Mig at 12. He's an instructor. The old dude is up 112 to 38. Total supply. Tempest wrecking that orbital command. Gone. And that's it. A good game out of Tyler. Tyler throws down the GG. It is 20 to 34 harvesters. He's got 14 marines to his name. The old dude says... I refuse to accept your GG. I'm going to head home instead. What? Oh, there we go. There's the GG from the old dude. But nobody's leaving. That's the weird thing. Hey, guys. But <laughs> the old dude. Are you showing mercy? There we go. There it is. Tyler's defeated. The old dude is victorious. It looks like he might want to hang around. So let's go ahead and do that and that and follow. And if he decides to move, we can follow him. All right. So that's it for our weekly edition of Into the Void. Hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Uh, again, just I hope some of the things that I said were instructional to those of you at the lower levels. And I hope this was entertaining to those of you who are at the higher levels. I mean, uh, Tyler, DT should not do that much work. I mean, Liberators, yes. Liberators often do quite a lot of work depending on what level you're at. But even at the higher levels, Liberators get in there and get 20 kills uh, just around different bases from different times just based on the angles they can use. But DTs, get missile turrets, get planetary fortress if necessary. If your opponent is going for a lot of them, invest in a Raven. And I really think Tyler would have been in a better spot, although he was really sticking with Marines for a long time here. And it's just, uh, Marines are really good, but if your opponent has Storm, like the old dude did, if your opponent has Archons, like the old dude did, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to work out in the end. So let that be a lesson to you Terran players. All right, so that's it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another weekly edition of Into the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Patrons, Nicholas Cheek, Sean Govin, Nick Riley, Josh Cornelius, Jin, Robert Farmer, KN, Matt Meermans, Huck on Marcus, Christopher, Alex Coffey, Ben Raboyne, 19 Day, Kith Carlo, Alexander Canaris, Complex, Ian Westbrook, Michael McIntosh, Sam Estegoy, Bo Bursett, Kale Anderson, Trevor Smith, Manhattan, GMP, Sik Kupata, Pedro Batsaris, Michael Willen, Plaid, Henry Cooper, Clayton Knight, Jan Kodera, Kevin Chang, Rajiv Bhatt, link at the top right, thank you, bye. And so you must run And it's taken your heart And broken your soul You cannot go back Until you're made whole And you're running Into the void You go searching You can live A place you can know Is it just an illusion When push comes to shove There's a light upon you Get it.
Into the void 